Hello YouTube, it's Dan Kovacs here. Um, today I'm going to be taking a look at uh, using Geos on the Commodore 64, uh, specifically uh, uh, IRC on Geos on a Commodore 64, so we have to get this thing connected to the internet and uh, we can use it for chatting. Um, I have also installed uh, in this computer uh, a micro IEC flashcard reader which acts like a hard drive. Uh, I'll just show that to you right now. Um, this is not a Commodore 64, actually it's a Commodore 128, but we'll be running it in 64 mode. So if you uh, look at the side here, I've got this thing in internally installed and it takes uh, takes a flash card. Uh, this one is a one gigabyte one and it has all my files that I need to run Geos and many many other things. As you know, files for this system are very small so you can fit a lot onto a very small card and uh, it makes things uh, a lot easier. You don't need to worry about floppy disks like uh, this here. I do have a three and a half inch drive, but uh, I rarely use it because I have this thing. So anyways, we'll fire the system up, switch over to 64 mode. Before we do that, I'll show you the card. This was uh, reviewed in a video I did about two years ago, but this is uh, uh, a C64 NIC Plus. Uh, it was put together by uh, Jim Brain at Retro Innovations and he was selling them at World of Commodore a few years back so I bought one and um, I had to you know carve this cartridge case out so I could you know have openings for all the switches and uh, the Ethernet connector as well so I'll plug this back in and uh, we'll get started here Okay, so I have the flash card in now, and uh, I'm going to power the system up. It's going to start up in Commodore 128 mode. We'll switch over to 64 mode, and I'll uh, boot into Geos here. And uh, I would normally be using my TV capture card for this, but for some reason it uh, doesn't work anymore. It didn't ever really work properly anyways. So, uh, lesson be learned, don't buy a $20 TV capture card from a... Uh, an electronics reseller uh, go for something better. I'm saving up my money to get like a Dazzle card or something like that. I don't know. Whatever I can find that's better than what I had. So we'll switch over by typing in Go64 and pressing return. And I'll ask us if, our sh if we are sure. Absolutely I'm sure. So here we go. And then um, I have to CD into the directory that has the disk image. Uh, for Geos in it. So I'll do that by typing in the at symbol CD colon 2010. That sends signal to the drive to switch into a folder or to CD into a folder titled the uh, 2010. Now we CD into the disk image itself. Um, the IEC supports multiple different kinds of disk images from D41 images which is uh, uh, five and a quarter inch floppy disk images to D81 images which are three and a half inch disk images which is what I have my Geos installed into so um, type in the name oops 64.D81 and then press enter or return and then I have Jiffy DOS on this system, so all I have to do to boot the first file off the disk and start Geos is push these two keys, like so. And it boots very quickly. Um, this actually boots faster than my dual core PC loading into Windows. So, as you can see, as it's booting, the disk activity light's going like mad on my flashcard reader, and we're already booted in. So just take a look around. This was the graphical operating system for the Commodore 64, released in 86 or 87. Um, really intended to revitalize the 8-bit market, and they did. A, Berkeley Softworks did a very good job with this program. It's absolutely amazing what it can do for with a computer for its time. Like if I were to start GeoPaint, it's a very Mac Paint type application. It has all the tools you would expect to see. Uh, I'll just open a file up, or create a new file, I'll call it video or something. Press enter. And you can do everything you could do uh, in a 16 bit drawing application, except it's 8 bit. And uh, they get around the 
low screen resolution by allowing you to uh, move around the document. That box at the bottom represents the document, like a single page document as a whole. Um, you can pick from any of the 16 colors. However, be aware because this is uh, an 8 bit system that you're limited to whatever the hardware can do, which you'll see here if you have two colors in this screen resolution too close together you'll get color clashing which is pretty common uh, for systems of that time um, if I were to pick the uh, fill tool and just pick a color you'll see how the outlines all change to the same color as the uh, fill color which is kind of ugly but whatever <laughs> and I don't know what the info screen will show us 1985 to 1998 so yeah this is uh, this is an old program I'll quit I, I'm also using a mouse for input this came come standard to use a joystick for input as mice weren't very common back in those days but I do have a standard Commodore mouse. This is not an Amiga mouse by the way, Amiga mice will not work with the 64. Um, so, I guess the next thing is to start up our uh, uh, IRC program which is called Geolink. I'm gonna start that up in just a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna start up the Geolink application and you do this by double clicking on its icon uh, at the desktop and uh, it loads up the application. The first thing you're going to be asked for is uh, to load a settings file. I've had several routers over the years, so um, my last router was a Netgear. I had a Linksys set up in there when I tried to get this working at uh, uh, World of Commodore a few years ago. Um, so we'll open the Belkin settings file which match my router and uh, I'll take you in to look at the setup uh, page here which allows you to put in your IP address and stuff. Now the only thing I think it's been a while since I've done this but I don't think I think I think I needed to do is enter in uh, the MAC address for the network card. Um, I use DHCP to get the IP address so um, and it's using the router's IP for the DNS servers which is cool. At least it found one. So you click OK, it says it's connected to a network. And if I were to log into my router right now, I'd see that my uh, C64 has this IP address. And I don't want to save it, so because that would waste disk space. One of the little tools that you can use here is the ping tool. It'll let you resolve an IP address, so we'll try that out. And you see it resolves the domain name and gets responses. Pretty cool. We'll close this off and we'll connect to an IRC server. Now, this IRC server is hard coded into this program. This IRC note server no longer works, as far as I know. At least the last time I tried to connect to it, and I don't really want to connect to NewNet, I'd rather connect to FNet. So, um, I'll key in one of their server addresses. If I spelled it right, it would even work better. And uh, 6667 is the default port, that works fine. And put in my nick, which is usually this. And we'll click OK, and it will resolve the host and connect to the IRC server. And we are now connected. So this isn't fancy like Merck. It doesn't let you auto join channels. It won't even let you list the channels on the server. You have to bear in mind that this is a 64K computer, and because Geos is running, you're actually working with a lot less RAM than that. Um, so 
it's a bare bones IRC client, but it works good. It's good proof of concept that you can do something on such a limited computer. Um, so we'll join the channel and uh, let's see. Let's see what they're talking about in computers. I looked on their website, on FNET's website, and there's about 150 people on this channel right now. So, so it's going to join the channel, list all the users, and then you can participate in their chat. Sorry about the unsteady camera holding. Once I get my, uh, or get a working video capture card, I will be able to make better videos. So. Um, so we're in the channel, and it's listed all the users. So it's still listing channels, <laughs> or still listing users. This will take a little while. See what they say to that. They'll probably all think I'm trolling them. And the channel went quiet. <laughs> Let's see what they say. So while I'm waiting for a response, um, the installation of this ice, this card reader was actually fairly simple. All you need to do is pull the motherboard out of the uh, computer. You can do this with both a 64 or 128. And uh, um, you, I used Cat5. I soldered to the pins on the... Uh, oh, we're starting to get some responses here. Uh, they're talking about a video card or something, I think. I don't know. Anyways, you solder the pin. I soldered Ethernet cord to the pins on the IEC card, to the bottom of the motherboard, to the IEC port. Um, everything's well documented on the internet. So it was pretty easy. It was about maybe a 10 minute process to do. And uh, I have this set as drive A, which is the normal, the standard drive. Um, or the default drive used on Commodores. Um, most programs expect to be run off that drive. Um, I also have a three and a half inch drive that's underneath this desk that's connected as drive nine. I almost never use it. So anyways, back to IRC and people are just talking about how wonderful Wikipedia is, which is pretty true. So anyways, I'm gonna log out. Um, I hope this video showed you that this can be done. Um, it's an excellent program it's free you can download it I'm just gonna uh, pan over to my PC here and uh, I just installed Linux on this thing I want to play with that today lionlabs.org I think they're the ones that uh, did this IRC client. Um, click on his Commodore 64 link. I'll put the link to this in the comments of the video. He's done some stuff with Q-Link. Um, Geolink right here. So there's a screenshot. <laughs> Uh, but you've just seen it running live. So um, send me an email, drop me a comment, let me know what you think of this video. Uh, if you have any questions about how to get this stuff configured and running, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. Have a good day.